Hello, my name is Chris and I will look at the 2022 Jaguar I-PACE EV HSE. As with all EVs, it seems, this is a crossover with four-wheel drive. It has a 90 kilowatt hour battery and has a range of 381 kilometers. Power through two motors totals 394 horsepower and 512 pounds of torque. First, this car makes no compromises to rolling resistance with 22 inch wheels. Second, this car makes no compromises, period, to things we have come to expect with electric cars. Many electric cars seem to have the ergonomics made for software developers, not iPACE. For $100,000, you get a Jaguar with an electric motor and no other fanfare, which is the way I think many people will like. Clearly, electric cars are the future, but many people just love cars the way they are. iPACE provides this user and styling experience. I must say, it seems these crazy 22 inch wheels are tasteful in this styling. The bigger a vehicle, the bigger the wheels have to be in order for the proportions to be familiar. 20 inch wheels are standard though. The options experience is uniquely low cost. Many options are less than $1,000. Some options are cheeky such as $250 on a sunshade for the panoramic roof. Others are a bargain such as $700 for adaptive dampers. Of note, the Jaguar website is well designed for those of you who like to configure. It is an effective retail therapy. As usual with all electric vehicles, short trips are preferred and a charging station at home in your driveway is a must for the best experience. A full 240 volt 40 amp charge is a 10 hour affair and max charging is 127 kilometers in 15 minutes. Remember, batteries charge slower as they get closer to full charge. Surely, this vehicle is above average in terms of appearance and ease of use. One thing is certain, it certainly looks better than many of its competitors. Also, the prestige of the brand is undeniable, as is the exclusivity. Here are my thoughts on the road. Hello, car lovers driving the 2022 Jaguar I-PACE EV HSC. That's a... EV400. EV400 Ross. What a name, what a name, what a name what to say about this vehicle well i was listening i i didn't think we'd be trying this car so i listened to other car reviewers review this car one car reviewer um not to name him uh but i will give i will say i'm not taking credit for it he said that unlike most evs this vehicle has personality i will agree with him those of you who know me i've been reviewing electric cars for quite some time now and basically i say the following things they are wonderful in the city. They can't be your only car. You must own a home. And of course, they have no personality. They are, they're all the same. And I have to say, from a driving standpoint, they're, it's very similar to its competitors. So I'm on the highway now, very, very quiet. Super quiet, this is what I want. 22 inch wheels, nuts. I'm gonna flirt right now. That's, God damn it, pull, it, pull, it just pulls like nuts, right? You feel the mass. As soon as you start driving hard, you feel the mass. When you're not driving hard, it feels incredibly steady and sure on its feet. A lot of EVs do that. This car is no exception. In fact, it's kind of like, it's almost a feeling that's amplified. Okay, now what other things about this car? Well, this interior design, which I find, normally Jaguars are not the best in interior design, but however, most interior designs of EVs look like science experiments, right? They look like the, the, the nerds in school who went into software development and then they, they're just disconnected from reality. It's like a, a, a Windows Windows people, right? Versus let's say OS people. It's like they're, they're, they're Windows people, very complicated and we, we for no reason, right? There, there's no added value or a very small segment of the population. This vehicle is like $100,000. Who's gonna buy this vehicle? It's gonna be probably somebody like me, except who worked harder, was more intelligent, had more drive, and has the money to afford it, right? So, I, I, people like me are not necessarily tech geeks. I mean, we, we, we want the latest main things, but we don't need all the little things. This vehicle, very simple dash layout, very simple infotainment, well, if simple for this category of vehicle, all right, climate control, big knobs, uh, you know, it, it, it works, all right, it, it works surprisingly. I'm not saying it's user friendly, but it, it's pretty good uh, for the category. Nice leather steering wheel, nice leather seats, nice uh, comfortable seats, they're ventilated. We have here the Meridian sound system, sounds great, sounds wonderful. We have here decent visibility, except the rear view mirror 
that, that rear view mirror is like squinting to see what's going on in the back. It, it's really actually kind of funny. It's, it's a decoration, really, that visibility, more than a real useful thing. So the suspension is pretty good. Not quite 400 kilometers of range, which you're kind of expecting over 400 at this price. I must say, you get the 22-inch wheels, you get this no compromise styling. Uh, you do get decent ground clearance, which is not always the case with these EVs. So you're kind of getting a little bit for that range penalty. Still an ideal urban vehicle. I'm driving here on the highway. I'm losing autonomy. And Ross is stressing about the autonomy. So it goes to show you, even though he lives 60 kilometers away and there's 242 kilometers, he's got chores to run. So he's thinking about it, right? It's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's, a, it's an experience. You have to rewire your brain about where am I going? Because we don't want to charge up at those charging station, right? Nobody wants to go there. I mean, I certainly don't want to go there. So you, you want to charge at home. That's the really good EV experience. So still, I don't think it should be your only vehicle. I think if you're a couple, one of you has a gas or a plug-in, the other one can have a full EV. Uh, that's, I think, the best thing. Also, another thing that, well, Ross said on the French version, I, I, I certainly agree with him totally, is if you live in cold climate, right, you're going to lose half your charge in the very coldest weather, let's just say, all right? It's going to be anywhere between 0 and 50% depending on the cold, right? Depending on what you're doing if you are driving in the city, if you are driving on the highway, it's minus 30, forget it, your charge is just going to go down, falling off a cliff. So there's all these things to think about right when you're driving it's a new world right we're, we're just starting 10 years ago we had the nissan leaf and the tesla model s today there is a whole range of vehicles they are much more affordable they are within the reach of the upper middle class which is nice this one here hundred thousand dollars it's more for the wealthy i think and that's okay i think that's all right uh, and that's all i have to say about this vehicle very good i would definitely recommend it on the on the lease because of its comfort its quietness it, it's it's very plain spoken interior not in terms of the uh, style but in terms of ergonomic uh, I, I like the torque uh, it, it's its look is unique and it also has a lot of personality all right so that's very good the downside I would say is the the 22 inch wheels I, I'm just I've had it I've just had it right I'm, I'm, I'm tapping out right I'm, I'm this if this were UFC there I'd be tapping out 22 inch wheels is nuts I, I can just imagine uh, Penn the organizer I'm pretty sure his next car is going to have 22, 23, or 24 inch wheels. That's all I have to say about that. <laughs> Those are my thoughts. By the way, if you like this video, like it. If you don't like it, don't like it. And if you like it a lot, well then, of course, you should subscribe. And that is it.